Hi everyone, it's Sally here. Um, I'm just jumping on to do a video with the brand new watercolour pens that Tony has brought out, the Gossip watercolour pens. Um, and these are there. Beautiful. The only difference between um, the sort of pen barrel, if you like, to the alcohol markers is the colour, so that you know that you're either going to be picking up a watercolour pen, and with the gold one, you know you're picking up an alcohol pen. Um, these are fab. I love them. I've only got a few um, to play with today to show you a couple of techniques. Um, so the first, I'm just going to just get straight into it. The first thing I always recommend you do, and it's really important as far as I'm concerned, um, I think it's one of the most important parts. When you get any pen, pencil, um, you know, watercolour set, the first thing that I highly recommend you do is a swatch. I've got my swatches for all my pens, all my alcohol pens, and I have another folder for the watercolours, etc, etc. So for the watercolour pens, um, I've got a set of six um, in the floral collection and I have the set of 12 in the essentials collection. So they're all I've got now, I've just got 18 at the moment, I will be working up to getting them all. Um, and I just wanted to pop on and do a few um, techniques with you to create backgrounds. Um, and also to colour in your projects as well. So, um, in the watercolour floral collection, you've got some beautiful pinks, few flowers, green for your foliage, obviously, um, yellows, and a nice blue. You can mi mix and make other colours as well because they're watercolours. So, my essentials collection has got greys, which I'm going to be using today. Uh, blue which I think I may be using today and a couple of the uh, pink and yellow which I'm going to be using today because what I'm going to do at the end of this I'm going to do a few little sort of techniques and have a play and then I want to colour in the elephant uh, with you so hopefully it goes the way I plan it um, if not well we did it together anyway so right I'll just pop that to one side out the way one thing that I've done to help you guys is um, I've put a piece of acetate onto a piece of copy of paper. I've just sort of um, double sided taped it on because I'll use that for scribbling down um, my colour instead of going onto my mat. Um, because I think putting it onto the acetate, it allows it to um, sort of bubble a bit better. It's, it's better. I find it better. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so you know that I use the Carter paper and just bear with me a second so to open my folder so I can see my colours. Okay, so I'm going to use, um, I'm basically going to show you how to do a few different backgrounds. I've got things like bubble wrap, I've got a bit of handmade paper, some lace and cheesecloth. Um, I've got some tin foil and some um, cellophane. And I've also got um, a plastic stamp mat. So the I'm going to start with this one as soon as it's in my hand. Um, and they're showing you different ways you can, um, you know, create a background. So I'm going to pick a couple of colours. So I'm going to pick out of the floral collection. I'll pick number 63, which is this beautiful pinky colour. And I'll pick number 59 because that's a lovely pinky colour as well. And I'll grab number, let's have a look. Where are you, number 43? Okay. 43 seems to have gone for a wonder. Where are you, number there you are. And this is why it's so important to do that swatch because the reason I couldn't find 43 immediately was because this is the colour 43 gives, which is a, a lovely sort of subtle creamy colour. Um, but the because I wasn't looking for the number, I was looking for the colour, which is I think often what people do. Uh, the barrel's just a slightly darker colour. So it, this is why I do the swatch. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my, again, you've got a chisel tip, 
and you've got the beautiful brush nib um, just the same as you have with the alcohol pens so I'm going to lay down some colour using these three pens onto oops it is onto the I love that squeak <laughs> Uh, onto the stamping block and then I'm just going to spray that with a little bit of water and then I'm going to turn it over and squish it down onto my watercolour card okay and then you can start to see I love this kind of thing you you know utilizing things to make your backgrounds and then all I'll do is I could probably get a second generation off that so bring it down a little bit further let's go for another one let's see how far we can go I can see there now it's starting to disappear so it's losing its colour so I'm just going to go and reload those three colours okay do another spritz pop that down at the bottom here And just leave it to soak into that card and then just lift oops Daisy just lift it off and then you've a little bit left I'm just going to pop it down there okay and then that's one way of creating a background obviously then you'll build on that with things like your stencils and um, you know your pastes and what have you but that is the absolute start to creating a background, which is what I wanted to show you. So that's one. Okay. Then I'll grab my oops, a daisy. Grab my cellophane. I'm just going to turn this around. I'm just going to have. jiggy it up a little bit so let's go for a couple of different colours so we'll go for a beautiful green and then this lovely blue and then I'm going to grab the neon yellowy colour exactly the same spray that but I'm not going to actually lift that up I'm going to pop it down and then I'm going to spin it over and then press it down and this is another technique that I love doing and then you can leave that one to just sit or you can I'm going to whip it off now actually no I'll leave it to sit and dry because there's a reason so I'll just pop that to one side and we'll have a look at that in a minute another thing that I did now excuse the noise I'm going to roll up this um, tin foil so not not heavily but enough it's kind of like doing the cellophane technique with tin foil but you get I think you get a lot more on this one you get more ridges and what have you so I'm just going to pop on a nice bit of purple so just be gentle when you do this because obviously tin foil is sharp green like I said just do this a bit slower um, I'm 
and then same principle pop your water on top and squish your paper into the tin foil okay and you can go back in again and then I actually really like this one because you can go back quite a number of times and build up okay so that's your tin foil method so I'll just let that dry okay then let's grab another piece of paper this is one I think everybody loves this technique your bubble wrap so I'll just lay your colour down I'm not thinking too much about whether the colours are mixing or not I just want to get some down on the bubble wrap and then again over, squish it down, lift it up, squish it down, again you get another couple, you get a couple of generations off of that and you look at that, that's brilliant isn't it for a background and again you, you build up on these backgrounds but these just, you know, and you're just using a watercolour pen, and there we go, so that's four pretty easy simple backgrounds pop that out the way and then I've got things like um, this is a beautiful piece of I'm not sure it's like a handmade very very fine handmade paper I haven't done this before so this is I'm going on the hoof here it might even not work but so basically what I want to do so I'll pop this down on some of that, oops Daisy, spray it and then I'm just going to and what I'm doing essentially is just changing the colour of that little piece of lace so when that dries off it's purple instead of the white so I can change the colour of it to suit my project so now I've got a purple piece that I can I use this for creating texture on projects so if I'm doing a canvas I would use um, a, a texture paste or I would use a gel medium and I'd literally scrunch this up in you know onto the canvas go over it with the gel medium and that creates that lumpy bumpy texture that I like sometimes so and all I'll do is just work that up. <laughs> so that's another. It is quite delicate, so there you go. I'll pop that on there. What I'll do is I'll probably do a little project with that once it's dry and I'll show you what I've done. I'll probably do it with a background that I've created. And then you can see how everything comes together okay and the thing as well i would do the same thing with cheesecloth and i would do the same thing with lace you can change the color of your materials okay so that's a couple of um different ones there i have another one that i like to do um now i couldn't find my um ear syringe um it's going to be in the nether regions of my crafting room somewhere you know the little ear balls for a syringe in the air so but I do have an old bottle of that's quite that can squeeze it's quite you know that can do the job so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to very lightly dampen my page and then I'm just going to go over it to take that top layer of wet off 
okay then what you need to do I, I try and be quite quick doing this pop your colour down spray your water on and then spray it's not a very good colour to show that actually let me try a darker colour honestly sometimes let's try this one so I'll be quick with your water have that ready okay and then spritz that's not a good one either <laughs> Not dark enough to show you. Oops, it is. This should be. Okay, so pop your colour down, spray, that's better, and then pump the air through. It's a bit like doing it with a straw, but I don't like blowing through a straw. I don't think you get the same impact than you do with this because this makes quite a big um, splay out, if you will that's even the word for it mm -hmm. so I'm going to do the same with another dark colour down here there we go so I'll put another bit of that in there okay and I will put some of that red down here Here, Let's spray that out. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's go for a pinky. Oopsies. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and it's getting too wet now to be laying down my pens. So We'll leave this to dry but you can see there how to create another background all these I will create a project on so you'll be able to see um, what I'm doing so I'm going to pop that to one side to dry okay so that's one two three four five that's five five backgrounds there already and this one just gonna lift that up and this one's from the um, cling film, which I think you can see the sort of folds and lines. I think that's quite a good background too. And that's using um, a watercolour pen. And then you can use them as is intended on, you know, to watercolour a project. So I'm just going to grab my little elephant and then I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm just going to all I do is put a little bit of water over and it's kind of like preparing it if you like for it's just dampening the paper okay um, and it's it's starting that process off already where it it will bring the ink into the pit for me that works um so i've got my beautiful brush i've got number six my beautiful hemi brush okay and i'm going to wet that i think i'm going to start by doing a flower so I like to do this quite quickly so I can start taking the colour out straight away okay so just like you would do with your alcohol inks where you start from the bottom one or the way that's the way I do it so out with your pen and I bring it down okay like so that just gets that beautiful watercolour there 
So we'll move on to the next colour that we're going to use, which what I'll do is I'll start using that green. So I want number 25, which is this lovely green. Okay, so you can do this as well. So you can lay it down onto your mat and use it as a palette. So I'm just trying to get as many techniques to show you that you can do in this video. Okay. Okay, don't worry about going over the lines because I'm not doing it to be perfect and little Nelly isn't too worried about it so okay and then what I will do is get that beautiful number 43 okay and I'm going to do the um, this beautiful flower with it like I said, I, I like to put it down, but go to it quite quickly so it doesn't have too much chance to dry onto the card. The quicker you get to it, the easier it is to manipulate it. Okay. So I'm just going to let that sit for a second. So I'm going to leave that there because I know I need that to go back over this flower. I want number 59 again. Because I'm just going to deepen that centre. And all I've done, once I've deepened that centre, all I've done is I've gone and blended the top of that line and left the rest because I want the depth I don't want to soften that anymore so up there and then just soften that edge where you where you've come to with your flicking okay so just like so so you've built up that beautiful, beautiful flower. Okay, so I'm going to grab the number uh, 25, which is that lovely green. I'm going to do exactly the same that I've just done with the with this flower. I'm just going to go up. And then I'm going to just soften it. Uh, I, I do prefer working with the brush, but sometimes you need to use your bullet just to get into these. Smaller spaces. Okay. So just deepening or putting your depth in for your lovely leaves. Okay. Now I adore these brushes because they actually hold the hold water in the in the bristles quite nicely. I do have other brushes. I do have brushes that are really expensive that um, that have they don't hold as much water. You don't have to keep re clonking into the water to to load it up. 
which is obviously important for water colouring. But if you've noticed, I haven't had to do that too many times because I've already got a lovely load of water in. Right, so what I'm going to do is take the colour off there and just soften that lag. And can you see how that's building up beautifully? Okay. Just going to do this this one okay just soften that has a little bit there okay and then I'm going to go back to the big orange flower which should be dry now and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the pink one okay I'm going to and then just soften out like that so from the centre and then just So I've kept a little bit of white with this one. I'm just going to soften it out in a second. But I've kept a little bit of white on the leaves and the flower. Because I don't particularly like to always blot out the white. So again, just soften the end. very satisfying squeak that isn't it <laughs> so again just go around and because that brush is loaded with water I can keep going around and it won't dry off at me so so there you go and there's the beautiful flowers and then all I'm going to do for the elephant is actually lay the colour onto my white mat now I've got a grey, which is number 20, whoops Daisy, number 21, okay, which is this lovely grey, okay, and I've also got, I've got 21 and number 1, which is actually black. It's a very, very dark grey, almost black. So we can kind of work between the two to get the shade, working with the shade and dark. So shade and dark, shade and light. So I'm going to grab that first and I'm just going to gently, with no particular care, except to try and stay in the lines, but I'm just... going to lay down just a little bit of colour okay so it's just two hints at the grey if you know what I mean and just going round circular just the same as you would with a pen I still try and 
do circular motions. Okay, right down to. I'll just do that flower in a second while the grey is drying. Okay, so I'll let that dry. So I've popped on, that's the first layer of your grey. And then I'm going to add light and shade shortly. So what I'll do is I'm just going to pop down this beautiful pink. And I'm going to colour in the gorgeous flower that's in her trunk. Okay. I'm just going to let that dry for a second and I'm going to build up on that just like I have done with this one. Okay. I don't want to keep this, um, yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but I do hope that you enjoy my videos and that you get some help or inspiration from them that would really make me make it worth my while make me happy I mean I'll sit and do them anyway you'll just either watch them or obviously you could speed through them if it's going too long for you but I know a lot of people are beginners in watercolours so and I, by no means of the imagination, I'm a, an artist or a colourist. This is literally just what I will, just what I would do. And I think that it hasn't turned out too bad. So I would happily frame that or put it on a card and give it a friend or... Right, so I'm going to... Oops, a daisy. Just do that technique just to deepen that flower out. I've just used the chisel this time okay so again, you're getting a nice and a nice blend on there like that. I think one of the fab things about watercolours as well is that as much as you can put your colour down, if you make a mistake, and don't leave your brushes in your water. If you make a mistake, you can, as long as it's not sort of completely dry, you can go and you can take that colour out. Okay, I'll probably put um, a gem there as well, so I'm not too worried about it because I may be going around the outside as well. Okay, so I'm going to mix the dark with the grey to get a slightly darker, but not this dark, with grey so that I can just... highlight where they're already highlighted because that is your guide with these beautiful stamps so you're getting your light and your shade okay and I don't want to go too much because I just don't want to um, I don't want to spoil it sometimes I can overwork things or overthink things and but when I do it goes in the bin and I don't worry about it and I start again or if I go back to it and I think well actually you know what 
it wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay, okay. Just going to shut all that out a bit. So all I'm doing here is just adding darkness. That wouldn't go down the trunk anyway again it's actually already highlighted for you so all I'm doing is just going over that work This side I'm just going to go over what I've just done just to soften it all a little bit so you're going in with that mid tony colour and just there we go okay I'm just going to put a little bit down here. Okay. A little bit. Down there. Just where you would expect it. take off and going in little circular motions take off any harsh lines just like that okay and I'm gonna call her done because I mean, if I go anymore it's it's just gonna um, it doesn't she, she doesn't need any more so then what I would do with that I would add gems and glitter and uh, also, I'll tell you what we've also got. We have gossip pens. Now, these are the clear overlay pens, okay? And these are beautiful. So, what I'm going to do is, let's check that's dry. I'm going to, just to show you how it works, I'm just going to go over the pink flower you just see a little bit of the iridescent sparkle there on the flower okay i'm going to do exactly the same on the orange one okay so you can see that lovely sparkle there and then Turn onto this bottom one. Like so. I'm gonna get that beautiful iridescence. I'm hoping it's picking it up, but it may not be. Okay, so I'm gonna call that one done and what I'll do when I've stopped filming, I'll go and create a card with it and um, show you what I've made. Um, so that is that. So I'm just going to take this out of the way. And then I'll just show you again these backgrounds that we made. So we have the one that we used the bubble wrap with, which I think is brilliant. I absolutely love that. We've got the one that I used the um, air puffer with. Okay. Again, I'm going to make something with all of these and I'll put them in groups so you'll see. Um, what I've done then this one was the one we used um, with the wrapping not wrapping paper cellophane paper 
um, I think that's really good. I think that'll look great with the um, What If Ladies on it, or As If. And then this one was where we used the block and stamp down. Again, you, you build on these. These are just, um, you started for 10 really. And then this one, which is absolutely one of my favourites, is the tin foil. Um, and we ended up getting about three generations or four generations out of that. But I do love the tin foil one. So as I say, that's one, two, oops, a daisy. That's five backgrounds. Easy peasy done. And I will create something with them for you. And also our beautiful elephant. So I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and hit that bell and you know when there's something coming out that I've done. Um, other than that, have a fantastic rest of your Saturday. Um, please keep watching um, Tony's YouTube, Carly's on a lot, our Sandra, um, some of the other girls have done a few videos. Um, I think that's about it now. I think I'll shut up and go away. <laughs> so until the next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye.